I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Ernest Angley Hour. So glad you're with us today. We have for you good music and singing, a special Growing in Grace mission report, how God is moving through this Jesus ministry in different nations. Also a sermon by Reverend Steve Millar. As for God, His way is perfect. Friend, learn through this message today how to come into God's perfect way for your life. But first we have the Jubilee Choir. I'm getting ready to fly. Living free from my sin, oh Jesus, He's living in my heart. Oh, He's real to me, and I can't wait to see when those clouds in the sky begin to part. I'm getting ready to fly, to fly. I'll meet my Jesus up in the sky. Up in the sky. I'll be shouting. begin to part. I'm getting ready to fly, to fly. I'll meet my Jesus up in the sky. In the sky. I'll be shouting hallelujah when I meet him in the air. I'm getting ready to meet him there. Oh, I'm getting ready to fly, to fly. I'll meet my Jesus With heaven on my mind, I got up with heaven on my mind. Well, the saints were gathered there in that city built for square, and I got up with heaven on my mind. I saw Jesus walk the streets with pure and meek. He had wiped their tear dimmed eyes and made the dumb to speak with power divine. He healed lepers and the blind, and I got up with heaven on my mind. I got up with heaven on my mind I got up with heaven on my mind Well, the saints were gathered there In that city built for square And I got up with heaven on my mind loved ones there in that land so fair their hearts were full of peace and they didn't have a care singing songs of praise their voices lifted high for the lord had given them bodies glorified i got up with heaven on my mind i got up with heaven on my mind well the saints were gathered there in that city built for square and i got up with heaven on my mind 
I know I'm heaven bound, for Jesus saved my soul. He paid the price for me, but friend, it wasn't free. It cost my Savior's life, they nailed him to a tree. But love delivered him, and his blood delivered me. And I got up with heaven on my mind. I got up with heaven on my mind. Well, the saints were gathered there in that city built for square. And I got up with heaven on my mind. The title of my message is, As for God, His way is perfect. My opening scripture can be found in Psalm chapter 18, verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler, meaning shield, to all those that trust in Him. This is a strong scripture, and it lets us know that we can depend on God and to have confidence in His way, that His way is perfect. But unfortunately, many people do not put their trust in God, but instead they put their trust in everyone else but God. When you don't put your trust in God and, and in His Word, then you're really saying to God that you don't believe that His way is perfect. You have, have you ever dealt with a person and they think their way is always right? No matter what even when you know that it's not right. Sometimes you just have to let them be and let them learn the hard way that they are not always right. Well, that's what God has to do with a lot of Christians. He gives us the right to make our own decisions in life. He hopes that we will depend on Him for the guidance and direction that we need. That is why He has given us His Word and the Holy Ghost to help us understand His Word. Giving us the gift of the Holy Ghost is a part of God's plan. And His plan is perfect. But here again, many Christians have rejected that plan because they think their way is better. Now, it's one thing to be ignorant about God's ways because you don't have the knowledge. But when you come into the truth, it's important that you embrace the truth. When Paul was in Ephesus, he came, about, came across about 12 disciples, and he asked them an important question. He asked them if they had received the Holy Ghost since they became believers. Their reply was, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Those disciples were ignorant. They didn't know about the gift of the Holy Ghost. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave the disciples a message in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. There is a clear difference between being baptized in water and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
Many Christians will accept the baptism in water, but they won't accept the baptism of fire, which is the Holy Ghost baptism with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Paul wanted the disciples that he met in Ephesus to know the difference. And he laid hands on them, and they began to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost came upon them. They began to speak in tongues, and they began to prophesy. God's ways are perfect. And receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is one of God's great plans for his children. If someone tells you that it's not necessary to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then they're going against God's perfect plan. They're going against God's way. Many people have gone their own way in life and have never tried God's way. It's sad, but it's true. Now, that's not to say that when you go God's way, that you won't suffer many trials or tribulations in life. In fact, the Bible informs us in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you keep the faith that God's ways are perfect, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed to you through sufferings. But oftentimes when a person goes through a fiery trial, they get battled in their mind that they have failed God. But that is not what really is happening here. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean that you're failing God. No. Look at Job. He suffered greatly, not by the hand of God, but by the hand of the devil. The devil thought that Job would curse God and turn his back on God. When he lost everything that was important to him, Job kept the faith. Job kept his integrity. And in the end, the glory of God, of God was revealed. In Job chapter 42, verse 10, it lets us know that, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. God's ways are perfect, even if when you don't understand why bad things are happening. The devil likes to cause mind battles when we're suffering. When you're struggling, the devil is going to fight you physically and mentally. The devil wants to hinder you any way he can. God revealed to Reverend Angley many years ago that the battles of the mind would be the fieriest battles that God's people would go through. It would be as if they were in the arena with roaring lions coming after them. God also let Reverend Angley know that we need to read in that book, Battles of the Mind, 
every day. But some people, they don't do that. They have mind battles, but they don't read in the book every day. You can do what you want. But I believe God's ways are perfect. And if he says to read in that book, Battles of the Mind, every day, that's what I'm doing. Friend, if you can't do the little things, then how can the Lord expect you to do the big things when he calls upon you? God has his reasons why he does things a certain way. But the goal is to always give the Lord the glory no matter what you're going through. We're going to be going through trials. The hour is very late. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, as the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus knew what was going to happen, that Lazarus was going to die. Mary and Martha had the faith to believe that Jesus could save their brother. That is why they sent a messenger to Jesus, so that Jesus would come quickly to Lazarus. But Jesus didn't rush to go save Lazarus. No, Lazarus was dying. Jesus waited two days, knowing that Lazarus was going to die. Jesus could have spared Mary and Martha from all that grief, watching their brother die right before their very eyes. But Jesus didn't rush to heal Lazarus. If he would have, then there wouldn't have been that great miracle coming forth out of the tomb after being dead four days. That would have never happened. And all the souls that witnessed that miracle would never have saw that great miracle. And the glory of God would not have been revealed on a greater scale if Jesus would have healed Lazarus. Sometimes we're going to have to go through some things that we may not understand at the time. I'm sure after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, they looked back, Mary and Martha and the other people, and realized why Jesus waited. that everyone needed to see the awesome resurrection power that raised Lazarus from the dead. God's ways are perfect. Even if we don't understand it at the time. Isaiah Chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When I think about how God's ways are perfect, I can't help but think about how God saved my father from the rescue, rescuing him from the clutches of the devil. See, after my parents got
got a divorce. I didn't spend much time with my father for certain reasons. But after I got saved, I made it a point to visit him as much as I could. Now, it wasn't easy because at the time he lived in Florida and naturally I lived here in Ohio. But when I would travel down there, we would spend time together out on the boat, fishing. That's one of the things that we both had in common. We loved to fish. It was great times. It had been a couple years since I saw my father and I was going down to visit him. I had a feeling of urgency that I needed to go see him. So I booked a flight and made a journey to Florida. My dad would usually pick me up from the airport, but this time it was different. I decided that I was gonna rent a car and drive all the way over there from Tallahassee. He lived on the panhandle. When I arrived at my dad's house, I knocked on the door and he didn't come to the door. He didn't answer. So I went around to the back door and it was open. As I went inside, I saw my father laying on the floor. He was weak. He couldn't even get up off the floor. He was stuck there. No one to help him couldn't get to a phone, just laying there. Here my big, strong dad that I always looked up to as a kid was weak and frail, bones laying on the floor. I had no idea that my dad was in such poor health. On the phone, he never complained. You never would even known that he had anything wrong with him. I believe that God had a hand in me flying down to Florida that day to help my dad in his time of need. I have never seen him in such a condition. And on top of all of it, this hurricane was coming on in right dead center where my dad lived. As you know, most of you know, a hurricane's huge. So I had a decision I needed to make. Should I take my dad to the hospital and try to ride out the hurricane at the hospital? Or take my dad back to Ohio and just outrun the hurricane? It was like a mass exodus out of Florida anyways. I knew that my dad would be better off back in Ohio with me and my wife, spiritually and physically. But how was I going to convince him to leave his home in Florida? His life was there. Well, the threat of a hurricane heading our way and for us to possibly find shelter convinced him that we should go to Ohio. So we packed a few clothes, grabbed some important papers, put them in a box, really didn't take much at all. Leaving the storm behind us. When we got to Ohio, I took my dad straight to the hospital, admitted him. The report came back that he only had 15% of his heart working and he was dying. It's hard to watch someone die In fact, for me personally, it's one of the hardest things to do as a minister, to watch someone die. When I drive home from a hospice visit or a hospital, leaving that person that just passed, knowing that the family is suffering their loss, it's one of the hardest things to do. All you can do is encourage the family. 
They're struggling. Just pray for them. Now I'm faced with the reality. My father's dying. But the Lord knows. He knows the situation. Remember, God's way is perfect. For years, I lived my life before my dad. I didn't really ever preach to them, him. I didn't feel led to, and there was always that wall there. Yes, I would talk to him on the phone and tell him about a sermon or give him a DVD. He'd watch it. But there really wasn't much there. He loved me, but he just, it wasn't for him. For whatever reason. You can't drag someone to the altar. Well, it came to the point where he was dying. And I wasn't able to pray with him. I could pray with him, but I couldn't pray the sinner's prayer with him. He was there with me for a couple months, and my wife. Now, my wife and I would go visit my dad. In fact, we even got to go to the other room right next to him, witness to a lady, said the sinner's prayer, got her glorious saved before she went to heaven. But my dad wasn't ready for whatever reason. I'd even tell him that, hey, if something goes wrong, just cry out to God. Well, my dad passed away. It was sudden. My wife got the call from the nursing home. She told me, she called me here at church. We were just getting ready to walk out with Reverend Angeline. It was right before service. So I talked to Reverend Angela before we went out. My wife told me that when she went into the nursing home room where my dad was, that there was an overcoming peace upon her. That she was, could tell that my dad had peace on his face. Now, I'm talking to Reverend at this time. And I let him know that I didn't say the sinner's prayer with my dad. But he let me know. He reassured me that he said he got quiet at first. And I knew the Lord was talking to him. And then he let me know that my dad barely made it into heaven but he made it in. A few weeks earlier, like I said, my dad was being taken away by an ambulance and I let him know then, because he wasn't ready then either, no matter what, to cry out to God if you think you're dying and give your heart to the Lord. When this happened, I was glad that I had the opportunity to explain to him about salvation. I'm glad that he made it into heaven. Yes. I wish he would have gave his heart sooner to the Lord. He could have been a great instrument. But that's how some people are. They wait until the very last minute minute on their deathbed Maybe you have a relative that's just like that. At least live it before them and explain to them to cry out to God. 
so that you can, so they can be a brand that's plucked from the fire. I don't know how God dealt with my dad, what was going through his mind when he was with us those two months, but I do know that God did everything in his power to rescue him, to make himself real to him. I know that God's ways are perfect. God knows the future. He knows what it will take to win that soul. And that soul, all he has to do or she do is cry out to God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If someone would have told me the story that my dad was now going to move back to Ohio because of a hurricane, I would never believe them. That journey back to Ohio was his final journey here on earth. But now he is with the Lord, and I expect to see him on that great rapture day when the dead in Christ will be risen. Friend, you can't think that nothing is going your way when God is working everything out. Trust in God, no matter how bad it is. We all want our loved ones in heaven. And most of us will do whatever it takes as long as, it, well, long as we're obedient to God and we don't compromise. They'll recognize the Lord in each one of you. We just have to trust in God that his way is perfect, no matter what the situation is. Sinner backslider. God gave us the perfect plan of salvation so that each one of us can receive Jesus Christ into our heart. All you need to do is confess your sins and ask Jesus into your heart, and you will receive salvation and eternal life. Don't be like my dad and wait till the very last moment to receive Jesus into your heart. Become that great vessel that he can use to tell others about Jesus, because this hour is late, and God needs all the help that he can get for each one of us. Friend, I'd like to encourage you right now to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Pray with me. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins, but I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. If you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now let's get your miracle for you. It doesn't matter what sickness, disease, or what you're going through in life. God's way is perfect. He can bring you out of all of that. Just trust in him. Then you'll have this wonderful testimony to tell others about Jesus and what the Lord did for you, how he brought you out of that valley. So at this time, myself and Reverend Chris Mockamer and all the believers here and the believers that are worshiping with us are going to pull down heaven expecting God to move for you right now. So just put your hand on your listening device. Those in the sanctuary, just lift your hands up. Let's just pull down heaven together for each one of those souls that need deliverance. Lord, Heavenly Father, just move in a special way. Break their bondages and set them free in the blood name of Jesus. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And let everything come to normal. Amen. Friend, I'd like to encourage you to contact us and let us know how you're doing. We'd love to hear your testimony. And now at this time, those of you that are in this sanctuary that you need prayer, you can go to my left and your right.
and I'll be over there in just a little bit to minister to you and all the rest of you. I'd like to encourage you to come forward to receive more power from on high when I call down the Holy Spirit upon each and every one of you. And friend, those of you that do need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'd like to encourage you to say glory, just one glory right after another. And as you're saying these glories, let the Holy Spirit take over your tongue and speak in a heavenly language. We have wonderful workers here that can help you. I'd like to encourage you, those of you that are online, just wherever you're at, just get off by yourself and start praising the Holy Spirit, let, praising Jesus and let the Holy Spirit come on in. So at this time, as everybody starts yielding on over, Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost and just start praising them. Glorify in Jesus. Glorify in the King. Praise in Jesus. Lifting up those praises. Yes, let that power get greater in your body. One glory right after another. Praise in Jesus. Fall in love with those praises. Just you in Jesus. Just you in Jesus. Praise in the King. Love in Jesus. Friend, I'm believing and expecting God to meet that need in your life. And when he does, we'd love to hear about it. You can send us your testimony by email. Send it to testimonies at earnestangely.org. And I want to take a moment, friend, to encourage you to stand by this Jesus ministry and help us to continue to shine the light of truth throughout the world. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, we are to be a shining light. And one way to do that, friend, is to join with us, spreading the gospel truth far and wide. And when you stand by with your prayers and your financial support, God will bless you. He'll open up heaven's windows. He'll pour it out upon your life in abundance, spiritually, physically, and financially, because what you invest here goes for souls. You can send in your support by going to our website, donating online. You can also send in your financial support through mail. And those of you in Canada, we have a special mailing address for you. And if you decide to sponsor each month, well, we will send you a new giant little book of the month powerful spiritual messages in booklet form. And the February giant little book is entitled Stand for God. What a message of encouragement. So when you send in your support for February, be sure to request gift offer P384. And when you have the opportunity, do go to earnestangely.org and read the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. And the theme of this edition is the power of Bible prayer. Learn how to pray the Bible way and get results. Also, you'll read many testimonies that come into this Jesus ministry of what God is doing for people. When they ask for prayer, God is blessing, people are receiving. Read it for free, earnestangely.org. Now we have the Heaven Bound Trio, and they have a wonderful song for you. And the title is The Anchor of Love. Listen and be blessed. Tossed by the currents, carried by the waves, my ship was in shambles, the storm I couldn't shake. I cried out, dear Jesus, save me from the storm. He answered my cry, and my drift was no more. God dropped the anchor. It was shaped like a cross. Though the sea was enraged, my ship did remain held down with God's love. The storm did its best, but my soul has found rest through the anchor of love. Life storms can be hard, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. My Jesus is with me 
my peace carries on. Peace carries I on. give God the glory. I'll praise Him forevermore. I'll stand on His word with joy to the Lord. God dropped the anchor. It was shaped like a cross. Though the sea was enraged, my ship did remain held down with God's love. The storm did its best. But my soul has found rest through the anchor of love. Hallelujah, we give you praise. Hallelujah, you give us strength. When the around me I'll praise your name in the midst of the sea there is peace when God drops the anchor it is shaped like a cross though the sea can enrage my ship will remain held down with God's love. Through the storm I am blessed, cause my soul has found rest in the anchor of love. Through the storm I am blessed, for my soul has found rest in the anchor of love. Hi, I'm Reverend Steve Millar, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy, and we'd like to give you an update on our Growing in Grace mission program. Well, it's wonderful to be here, and it's exciting because this program is going in, into a new phase. We're now able to send literature in different languages. So some of the tracks that we normally send in English are now being translated into other languages. This here is the Portuguese language that I have here before you. And it's just wonderful that we have this opportunity to send this literature. And three of our tracks, the Born Again track, the Healing track, and also the track Seven Steps to Conquering Fear are being translated. So it covers deliverance for soul, mind, and body. And God is providing uh, interpreters to translate these tracks. In fact, Pastor Nadegwa's sister, who actually is a retired school teacher, she was able to interpret see, these tracks in the Swahili language. Wow. And what a blessing <laughs> that is because now there's so many people in Africa that speak Swahili. And he's able to go in the prisons and be able to pass out these tracks and win souls for the Lord. And just think on the back of these tracks, there is actually our contact information. So if they want to contact us through social media to get prayer, they can do that also. Yes, it's such a great blessing. And as pastors are learning about these tracks, the requests are coming in. They want these tracks to be translated into their languages. Uh, for exap example, Pastor uh, Masambuka from Malawi, he sent a special request. Please print Chichewa. This is this will help our youth Bible study centers and will be given free of charge to those who cannot afford the gospel. So he sees a great need in his country. Yes, and that Chichewa is their language. Mm -hmm. So what a huge blessing and God's made a way for them to have that track to touch many souls. Yes, and then he responded once he received it. Praise the Lord, our almighty God, for opening a door for Malawians. Chichewa tracks are important materials for evangelism and discipleship to reach many souls for Christ. This will help both rural and urban areas. There was such a need for this and God answered it. He bridged this gap by you. So it's wonderful to hear those testimonies and knowing that this literature is really touching lives. Well, now we have a new pastor that we wanna talk about and his name is Pastor Cassio and he's from Togo, West Africa. And he carries such a great burden for his country. And we have already shipped mm -hmm. him literature and he's had the opportunity to distribute it to his congregation. Uh, the predominant language in his area is French. 
So his request was some literature in that language. And we were able to send him, you know, the tracks translated in that language. What a huge blessing that is. You know, God made the way. And as soon as he received those tracks, he had them printed, and then he was able to get them in the hands of the people. And now we have a video of Pastor Cassio passing out tracks in his church. We want to thank God for His grace and love, the good things that God has done for us. Uh, we thank God for this uh, uh, ministry. Uh, we thank God for this uh, illness and great ministry. Who love to he love us too much, and he translates uh, these tracks, uh, which in uh, English he translated for us in uh, French. So God bless this ministry too much. We have shared with uh, this morning. Uh, my congregation love uh, this ministry too much. Uh, you want to thank God. Uh, God bless you. God bless everybody. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to see people receive the Word of God. It is wonderful. And well, now we have an update with Evangelist Ellen. Now she's from Zimbabwe, but she does travel to Mozambique to evangelize. Now their predominant language is Portuguese, so we made sure that she was equipped with tracts and Bibles in that language. Yes, and she was excited to go because she recognized that the people were in the bondage of sin yes. in Mozambique and that she was able to give them the literature in the Portuguese language. Yes, and this is what she had to say. She said, God is faithful. The ministry is growing because of the literature and Bibles. People are so happy to receive material in Portuguese. I believe that as the gospel reaches out to them, the Holy Spirit will convict them to give up their lifestyle. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Luke 19.10. <laughs> yes, and it's so wonderful. And we actually have a video that we're going to show you. It's a slideshow that we want you to enjoy right now. Like the farmer in the field, working up the ground, planting all his seeds, and a harvest now he's found. We must be like the farmer, working hard on the land, planting seeds of Jesus to reap the best we can. Work the land, help if you can. Be a soldier of the cross, work the land. Plows in your hand, there's a mission to be filled, work the land. Taking Jesus to the world before the setting sun. Harvest time is ready, and it's time for us to run. Master's help to send his power down. Jesus soon is coming, there are souls yet to be found. Work the land, help if you can, be a soldier of the cross. Work the land, work the land, the plows in your hands. There's a mission to be filled, work the land, work the land, help if you can, be a soldier of the cross, work the land, work the land, the plows in your hand, there's a mission to be filled, work the land. Yeah. 
And that's what we need to do. Work the land and get the literature into the hands of the people. Amen. Well, now we have a new pastor, Pastor Howard Naguera from Lusaka, Zambia. And he was very instrumental in helping us translate three of the tracks into the Chichewa language. And he has printed and, distri and distributed them to the members of his church. And he sent us word back that the Chichewa tracks are putting smiles on the faces of our people because they have the Word of God in their language. We will take some each time we go out to do witnessing. That's wonderful. And Pastor Howard, he's conducting a conference in Malawi and he's gonna be taking those tracks there. And it's gonna be amazing how God is going to move for him in a great way. And we actually have a video that we want you to watch right now at this time. Greetings from Christ Kingdom Builders Church. We need more tracks of uh, You Can Be Born Again because uh, these two tracks are mainly distributed as we go out. And uh, the healing track ones are also mainly used as we share with people about the healing. And uh, this also one about the fear, seven ways of uh, that you can. Uh, overcome fear is also helpful because many people are still living in in fear so we are really grateful for, uh, as i've been translating these current tracks i discovered that they are speaking about the holy spirit indeed uh, these tracks will be so helpful because many people here uh, they have not received or have an experience of the holy spirit baptism many people are still living in darkness some churches they teach that uh, the baptism is not of this age it is past so i just want to say thank you so much because uh these tricks we have just translated now they'll be helping so many uh believers even in our church many people they are not baptized into the holy spirit so i just want to say thank you so much and i don't know how i can appreciate you because you are really helping us so god be so much we love you and uh, we are grateful to partner with the NS Angler Ministers. Thank you so much again and again. We are blessed and our people are appreciative. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, we say thank you. Amen. Wow. Pastor Howard was so thankful for that literature. Yes, it's wonderful. And now we have an update on Pastor Patrick Pichani, and he's from Blantyre, Malawi, and his church continues to grow from the Bibles and the literature that he's sharing with others. And he has opened another church branch in Malawi, and he lets us know that Jesus is moving. The people love these teachings so much. Glory to God for showing us the heart of mercy for Malawi to know Jesus Christ. He also expressed a need for materials in their local language. And guess what their local language is? Chichewa. It's Chichewa, yes. <laughs> and he says, praise God that Pastor Howard from Zambia was able to translate those tracks in the Chichewa language. And the people of Malawi were so pleased. He says, glory to God for the good work done. Souls are being saved. Friend, you're hearing all these wonderful reports of what God is doing on the mission field through all your giving. And we'd like to thank all of you for giving today. What a huge blessing and opportunity it is to be part of this Growing in Grace mission program. And now we have a wonderful video for you to watch at this time. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, oh, send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, oh, send the light, send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine. Let it shine. From shore to shore. From shore to shore. Oh, send the light. Oh, 
open the light. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light. Send the light. No, it won't be long till we're in heaven above. Send the light. No, send the light. 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 The Friend, do you enjoy our good music and singing that you watch and listen to from week to week? Well, I'd like to invite you, why not join us for service, whether in person or by way of the live stream of our service. We have services every weekend, Friday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday evening, and we always welcome visitors. However, if you're unable to attend and be in person, well, join the service by our live stream. It's a great, great opportunity to join with us and worship the Lord. You can follow us on Facebook at Ernest Angley Ministries and join the live stream there. Or you can become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries. And you can, of course, join the live stream of the service there. We have good music and singing in each service, as well as the preaching of the word and prayer for those who are in need. And friend, if you have a prayer request, you'll have the opportunity during a live stream of the service to put your prayer request in the comments section. If it's of a private nature, just put unspoken request. Because at the end of the message, the minister will agree with you in prayer that God move for that need in your life. And we are getting follow-up reports, testimonies, how God is moving for people's requests. And it's wonderful indeed. Jesus said, only believe all things are possible to them that believe. And I want to encourage you, do check out all of our social media pages. We're continually adding new content from week to week. It's just good spiritual nourishment for your soul. Things that will bless you and edify you and lift you up in the Lord. And don't forget, Lord, you can always request a blessed cloth from this Jesus ministry. We send it out far and wide and people get results. And it's all according to Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. The anointing of God is in the cloth and God will move for that need in your life. So you can contact the ministry, go to our website, earnestangely.org, request it, we will send it to you free. Well, I hope you enjoyed the program. Hope to see you next week. You are special to God. Join us live every Sunday morning at 10 on YouTube and Facebook as we live stream our morning worship service. You will be blessed with great music and a wonderful message. This program was paid for by the partners of Ernest Angley Ministries. 